but nothing good came of it. There was no place for me to return to. This was the only place I could go. Okay, so as you guys can tell, the video for the Firepunk Anteater has finally came. And honestly, it's just been a lot of issues lately trying to get a good video for you guys because we've had voltage regulator problems, our truck was overcharging, and then we were having problems with the anteater, so on and so forth. But I'm going to click log on talk to you guys about what you want to hear so this right here this was actually glued on but the heat like made it fall off just recently so I haven't fixed it yet but this is the controller I had it mounted right here and as you can see we're in tune 2 we still have the base map tunes on here um, I believe the base map the tune 2 is towing tune but for some reason it drives really good the tow tune I don't know why um, honestly when the anteater works it works great like, the next stop we make, I'll record it, but like, it hits lockup good, it hits overdrive good, and honestly, the power change is like a lot. It's a lot of difference. It's, it's honestly insanely uh, more powerful than you would think. Okay, so now that we're at a stop and you guys can somewhat hear me, I'm gonna show you guys uh, the full shifts. Um, so we're gonna start out now. So it's just in a second pretty quick. That was second. And then we'll rev out. And then we'll hit lock up. There is lock up. Hit lock it first. This is the other nice thing about the end here is being able to look at all the live data as you're driving. What's up guys? Uh, so you guys obviously just watched the um, pretty much like a montage of like the truck operating um, with the anteater in it. Um, now I know some clips are probably hard to hear me in because the truck is loud and we're trying to drive down the other road but so I just want to kind of briefly go over some of the anteater stuff um, just because I know you guys are going to have questions. So starting off with what do you need to 47RE swap your truck and put an anteater in it. So the basis of that is you're going to need a second gen adapter plate 
Um, you're going to need a second gen flex plate, a second gen starter, a 47 or 48 RE, and then you will either need a manual valve body or an anteater, anteater standalone controller. Um, if you go if you go with the manual valve body, you'll need a ratchet shifter or whatever style shifter you decide to go with, but you will need a shifter. Um, if you get an anteater, you don't need anything. It comes with everything you need. It's plug and play. Okay, so as I was saying, sorry I got super distracted. As I was saying, um, so pretty much all you need to do the, um, sorry the garage is like literally super smoky because we are trying to break the test that. All you need, when you get the anteater, you get everything you need with the anteater. So, um, there's really no, no extra parts. Uh, I, you, I do suggest getting a trans cooler. You could keep your factory one, I'm sure. Um, I think I'm going to get an aftermarket dual row cooler. Um, but for the most part, the anteater's plug and play. I had a decent amount of issues with mine, but after, if you watch this video or the videos before this, then you guys won't have those issues because I solved them for you. So, uh, the main issue I was having with my anteater was wiring problems with the actual truck itself, not so much the anteater. The truck was backfeeding power into the TPS, which was more than 5 volts, and the anteater can only see 5 volts. If not, you can mess things up. Well, it was sending too much power to the TPS, <clears throat> and it was backfeeding to the controller, and I'm assuming the controller was going into like a limp, or like a protect mode, and it kept making the lights flash, and it would lose the tune, and I had to reflash the tune. For the longest time, I could not figure out what was wrong with it. Well, I finally pulled up the computer while I was driving, I was like watching everything, and as soon as, it, everything would work fine. And then, uh, just making sure I'm still recording. And then I would turn my headlights on at night to go to like the meet or something, and the truck would start messing up, and it never made sense to me. So like I always thought, oh, the truck's fixed, the truck's fixed, and then like all my friends would be like, oh, okay. And then we try to go to the meet, and my truck keeps messing up. So then I started watching the computer while I was driving, and as soon as I turned my headlights on, the TPS voltage would spike up, like way over, way more than what it should be. So I think the headlight switch might be shorting out, and causing the TPS to shoot power up somehow. I don't know how. Um, but for now, what I did was I unplugged the TPS sensor and stuff. And uh, I just have it tuned to where it shifts at mile per hour, which honestly works fine for me. It honestly shifts pretty good if you just tune it to like, like it shifts into overdrive at 60. And it shifts into, or it locks the converter at like 45 or 44 miles an hour. And then like second gear is pretty, it shifts in a second pretty quick. So um, really as far as like the performance of the anteater, it works great as far as like having a 47RE in this truck is just amazing. Like it wakes the truck up. It's a night and day difference. Um, I do wish that it was a little easier to diagnose problems with the anteater. Like you didn't have to call Firepunk every time something went wrong because they don't always respond. But that's kind of the price you pay when you swap something into a truck that doesn't belong in there. It's not always going to be easy to solve problems. So it has been a little bit of a headache uh, trying to get everything to work properly, but it's slowly coming together, honestly. Um, and I love it. Uh, we were having a really big charging problem where I was overcharging the battery. And I put a voltage regulator on it, still doing it. It turns out the voltage regulator I bought was bad, brand new. So got that problem sorted out. And for the most part, the truck drives great. The main, two main things were like the brakes were really shitty and the alignment was is way off. Um, so I need to get this truck aligned and I just finished uh, bleeding the brakes and they are 20 million times better. The rear brakes actually were not working whatsoever. Um, so like to launch the truck, I literally wasn't, would not be able to build any boost while launching it. It would spin the tire pretty much as soon as you try to spool it up and I just now spooled it up to 5 PSI in my garage so that's a big big improvement kind of scared to launch at that at 5 PSI just because I've never launched this truck with that much boost from a dig I don't know I don't know if that's good for it or not um, but that's good uh, it does kind of suck because the burnouts won't be as cool won't be able to do burnouts as easy but 
Oh well, I guess better brakes are probably a little more important. I could just get line lock for the front wheels. That'd be a good idea. But um, yeah, guys. Uh, as far as my rating of the anteater, it's great. If you want me to be 100% honest with you, if I could go back, I would do manual valve body for sure. Um, just because um, is the way I drive the truck is, you know, I like to be able to have control of everything and the anteater. It depends on what you're using the truck for. If you're daily driving it and you want it and you're putting an anteater, then that's cool. But I mostly just kind of beat on this thing and daily it kind of. So I think I would honestly rather have a manual valve body and somewhere down the road I might swap to one. Just because I feel like they'd be a little bit more fun because you could hold out shifts and whatever else. And uh, the only thing it would be is kind of annoying to have to shift so much with it. But um, as far as the performance, it works good. Um, it's, you know, pretty modernized, I guess you would say. Like the truck shifts good and stuff. So can't really complain about a whole lot aside from Firepunk's customer service, which we've discussed that. Um, here previously when I had a problem when the anteater was flashing uh, I hit up LaVon on Facebook and he responded pretty quickly so um, you know they could have just been having a busy week uh, or busy couple weeks so you know I won't be too hard on them but um, yeah so it's really my take on it uh, so the anteater really consists of this controller which I showed you guys yesterday you probably can barely see it but you have like the tune tune one tune three and tune two and then overdrive um and then i'll show you guys how i mounted mine and it literally is just power and ground or key on power and ground um as far as installing and then everything else just plugs into the transmission so this is where I ran mine it comes with a fuse you just mount then I have my ground uh, actually ran to the battery just so I didn't have to worry about any ground shorts or any problems of that nature um, and then my key on power I did have running to like the window fuse I believe it was so it's pretty straightforward guys um, works pretty flawlessly works pretty flawlessly and uh, you know depending on the application you're trying to do it for honestly it was what it comes down to but um, other than that guys that's really it for the anteater swap um, one other thing to keep in mind about the swap is if you do have a first gen um, you can use if this I'm speaking for a two-wheel drive. I don't know about the four-wheel drives uh, I Did see a couple videos about the four-wheel drives where you can still use the factory cross member You just have to modify it Well, on the first gen one two-wheel drive. I used my factory cross member as well and I just flipped it down as you can see right there and then uh, if you guys watched the previous videos I showed you guys what exactly to do with that mount. Um, I just made like my own little plate and used the second gen um, actual bushing mount to bolt to the first gen cross member and then um, used like spacers to level out the transmission and engine so it wasn't too low or anything like that. So. Other than that guys, I, I think that's pretty much it. I know this video is kind of a little bit all over the place, but um, I did just want to put a halfway decent video together for you guys to kind of uh, explain the anteater because I know I haven't really got a lot of time to do that. So, um, in the next video will be uh, us or me pretty much throwing this thing or getting some of the tweak tweaks sorted out and getting it looking good. Um, and then ODR is this weekend, so I'm going to try to get to that um, since that is in my hometown. Uh, if you guys see this video before then and you're going to ODR in Ohio for the Firepunk Diesel, uh, their event, hit me up. Um, I'd love to meet up and talk with some of you guys and uh, maybe you guys can see the truck because I do plan on driving it out there. Um, 
seeing it in person is a whole different. This thing is a lot uglier in person. That's okay though, I still love it. Anyhow guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you have any questions whatsoever, comment below or message me at on uh, my Instagram at SLZ Uncut. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces.